Hi, Southern Cross Stereo, wherever you are around Australia. My name is Travis Bailey, Senior Financial Planner from Advice First, the servicing advisors that go ahead and look after the Southern Cross Stereo AMP Staff Super Fund. Today's, pre or today's webinar, um, wherever you're uh, dialing in from, is pretty much pitched at anybody with superannuation, but we are going to highlight some features in relation to the Southern Cross plan with AMP. Um, but first and foremost, we would have loved to have been there on site, uh, meeting with you all, presenting, followed by one-on-ones, but unfortunately due to restrictions, we are unable to. So webinar is perhaps the next best format for us. Um, after this presentation, in the coming week or so, we're going to be sending out an invitation for you to actually reach out to us to actually have a one-on-one -on -one appointment or meeting to actually um, uh, to talk about your own personal superannuation or circumstances if you've got any queries. But today I'm going to run a presentation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my content and I'll take you through the agenda for today's meeting. Not meeting, presentation. So Today is of just the general nature. Uh, the content is uh, not specific to your own personal circumstances. So like I said, if you do have any questions, you're going to have the opportunity to give us a call and book in a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, today's, uh, today's agenda is um, we'll talk about who Advice First are. Um, we'll talk about thinking about retirement, which is obviously associated with superannuation. We'll talk about are you on track for a comfortable retirement? I have a couple of simulators that I'm going to take you through. Growing your superannuation, ways on how to contribute via either salary sacrifice, employer contributions, or after-tax contributions. Um, how to get the most out of your super, so I'll explain some features and benefits of the AMP um, Southern Cross staff super plan. And there's also some additional content available for yourselves in relation to further education. So who are Advice First? Look, we're a, a privately owned firm. We, uh, we, we offer financial planning advice, education and support. We've been supporting Southern Cross for about 16 years now. And we have in our times when we've visited on site, um, we've met a number of you. And um, you know, thankfully, we've got uh, a number of you as, uh, as private clients as well. Look, we specialise in advice and education. We've been doing this for more than 41 years. We are based on the Gold Coast, um, but we do travel nationally when we're allowed to. And we service private clients. That's the foundations of our business has been built on. But also we look after commercial and corporate clients, both nationally and internationally. We have nine qualified practitioners who specialise in specific areas of advice. And we're also supported by our incredible administration team. I guess with nine qualified practitioners, if you decide that you'd like to engage with us in relation to private client advice, feel free to reach out. And we have the luxury of going ahead and aligning yourself to an advisor or a practitioner who we think is going to be best suited for you, depending on what your circumstances and needs are. Look, we pride ourselves in relation to you know, how well we deliver on private client advice. And there's a very favourable statistic there in relation to the retention of our private clients. So let's talk about retirement. So we're here to obviously go ahead and help develop engagement with yourself in relation to your superannuation. So when we're talking about superannuation, the uh, a question that we get a lot is how much is enough? So how much is the amount that I actually need to, um, depends on a number of different circumstances. Firstly, how do you want to live? So depending on what your, um, what your travel plans are, what your family um, arrangements are, um, um, and, and also what your spending levels are like. So we'll talk a little bit, and um, in, in, we'll go into a little bit more detail in a couple of slides. It also determines on how long you live. Um, this is obviously, um, an important thing to consider, and we'll talk about some statistics based on um, how long we are living now compared to how long we were about 100 or so years ago. But these days, it's not uncommon for us to see people living into their 90s, um, and that's the current generation. Um, you know, my generation, 
are probably going to live into our maybe our hundreds. It's not going to be uncommon. So we need to plan for that. And also where you live is obviously a major factor. So we'll talk a, a little bit more in depth in relation to these um, these areas. But firstly, how much is enough? And I think it's important to talk about the tools that are available for you to be able to um, engage and have an idea of roughly how much superannuation your super is going to accumulate to. So I'm going to just stop sharing the screen here and just take you through a couple of the um, a couple of the the simulators that are available online at the moment. And these are simulators that we actually use with our um, with our private clients. Now, this is an AMP retirement simulator. It's pretty basic and uh, self-explanatory. So I'm going to just quickly um, take you through. I'll use myself as the example. Look, not not all of the information that I'm going to use is true. It's just going to be very hypothetical. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I will tell you this. I'm 46 years of age, born in the 70s. You just put in your um, your age, and then you click outside of that onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the page. Do you plan to own your own own home outright? Yes, I hope so. It'd be nice to actually have the mortgage paid off by the time I get to retirement. Do you have a partner? Let's just say no for now. What is your gender? Pretty self-explanatory on male. So it says here, uh, did you know that the average life expectancy for an Australian male is 81 years of age? So we'll put in my life expectancy there. And then also, um, I'd like to retire. Look, I would like to retire around about age, say, 63. So we can access our superannuation at age 60, that's called our preservation age, and the age pension, so when you're able to receive the age pension from the government um, as per some form of support or income from them, is age 67. But I'm going to say, look, I'd like to retire at age uh, 63. So it says here, how much do I need in retirement per week? And look, I've done my numbers. I'm going to put in about $1,100 per week in retirement. And that's taken into account that I've paid off my home. So I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of travel in the early, say, the early 10 to 15 years of my retirement. Now, you can see here there's a retirement needs calculator. So this can help you determine roughly what the um, what the weekly expenditure or monthly expenditure would be for you and your um, or your partner. Um, so you can click on that retirement needs calculator if you need to determine roughly what you're going to be spending on a weekly basis. And base it on pretty much what your living costs are right now, with obviously some, um, you know, some luxuries put in there as well. Um, would you like to have uh, include any additional lump sum expenses? So taking a holiday, like I said, I've already included that into my $1,100 per week. We're looking at buying a new car. Is it going to be emergency expenses? Look, for the illustration here, I'll put in yes. I'm going to say that I'm going to buy a new car um, worth, say, you know, $40,000. That'll see me through. I'm going to buy that at age, let's say, at age 60, okay. Actually, sorry, we have to put this in as um, age 61. No, I've got to go age above age 63, sorry, 64. There we go. Okay, so they're calculating our retirement, my retirement savings. So my income before tax, let me put in an income of, say, $80,000 per year. Uh, do you plan to take any career breaks? No. So this is determining how much money is going to be accumulated. Obviously, our employer puts in 10% of our gross income into superannuation. So that's 10% based on our gross income, hence why it's asking for your income and at what age we're going to obviously leave the workforce. Uh, this will also determine uh, roughly what sort of age pension you will receive. So it says here, 
um, any investments that you have, any assets you have, excluding your home, because the home is not included in an age pension test so or calculation. Let me say that I've accumulated, I'll have a car, um, I've got some money in the bank, and let me say my, my contents, let me say I've got $250,000 worth of assets. And then my current super balance, look, uh, I'm 46 years of age, let me say I've got $200,000 accumulated in my super. So then I view my results and it says that your retirement super balance will be $394,521. And that says that my income, my desired lifestyle income is going to last me to age 72. So we can just scroll down here and we can look at our results here as well. So it's got here your estimated retirement income over over time. So my income, I've chosen $1,100 per week, which is retirement income of $57,200. You can see here in blue my retirement income down the bottom. That's coming from my superannuation. Okay. And then we've got um, at age 64, I said that I was wanting to take out an extra um, $40,000 um, for, uh, for a vehicle, uh, which is which is there. And then I've got, um, you can see here as I'm transitioning through my life, at age 67, you can see that the age pension has start to start to kick in there. Um, so I'm taking a small proportion out of my retirement income from my super, and then obviously that's being subsidised by some age pension. Same when I'm 68, 69, my super starting to, obviously my super balance is starting to obviously dwindle away there at around about 55,436,000. ,000. Then you can see here when I get to age, say, 70, um, I, I stop probably meeting my um, retirement income needs even after being topped up by the age pension. It's got here there, the age pension at its maximum is about $19,945 in total. And it's got here my life expectancy is at age 81. Okay. So if... If I wanted to maybe play around with, um, I can I can see that there there's going to be a shortfall, or I'm going to be probably not living my lifestyle that I want past say age 71. I can start to look at maybe a strategy of adding more to my super. So I talk about this a little bit later, but we can salary sacrifice money into super. Let me say I'm going to put in $500 per um, per fortnight into my superannuation. Remembering my super balance was 394,000, by putting $500 per fortnight via salary sacrifice into my super, you can put it in as also after tax or personal contributions, or also as a one-off, just maybe a lump sum contribution, there may be an inheritance, or you may have um, you know, sold an, an asset. Um, apply the changes, and you can see there that my super balance has now gone out to 600,000. And you can see here that my sustainability of my income is going to last me through to pretty much age 76, once again, reflected in the graph. So look, I just wanted to take you through a, a quick example of that simulator, which is accessible um, through AMP. And there's also another one here through MoneySmart. So moneysmart.gov.au, um, I've got the links at the bottom of the slides, um, which will, uh, I'll show you in a second. But if you go to these three lines here in the top left-hand corner, click on that, go to super and retirement. There's a whole lot of other calculators available for you to engage. Then find superannuation calculator, click on that, and the same similar sort of a calculation asks your age, your income, when you are when you're expecting to retire, your super balance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Couple of different um, uh, formats and, um, and 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 sites for you to go ahead and access those simulators. So I'm just going to go back to the slides again and share share my screen. Okay, so you can see here at the very bottom of the screen, I've got um, I've got the the websites where you can go directly to those uh, those sites and start your simulators. So your retirement goals. So when we look at, um, you know, looking at your super and looking at the shortfall that you do have in these calculations, will your superannuation be enough? Look, it's one format of 
saving for retirement. But you need to ask yourself, are your employer contributions or any personal contributions that you're making, are they going to be enough? Um, will the age pension, you could see the top up of the age pension, is that going to be able to sustain my lifestyle as well? So do you need to seek advice? Well, sure. If you feel like you'd like to um, obtain advice, um, receive some form of engagement or have a plan to go ahead and map out, that's where we can go ahead and assist you as well. And just to ensure that your super is working to the best of its ability. We talk about a comfortable retirement. So research performed by the Australian, uh, sorry, the Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia, it shows that for a comfortable retirement, singles may require a lump sum of about 545,000 and couples may require about 640,000. So obviously in my simulation, my standard of living was a little bit higher to the, the bare minimum. Um, it also assumes that you live comfortably a single person would spend about $44,400 per year and a couple would spend about $62,000. So I'm obviously um, uh, looking to uh, take you know a holiday overseas every year when we are allowed to eventually travel um, and spend probably about ten thousand dollars per year on a on an overseas holiday but you can go to the um, the ask for retirement standards um, calculator there which I showed in my uh, presentation which was that retirement spending calculator link um, to 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 calculate exactly what your expenditure would be on a weekly monthly basis um, for either a single or or a couple. So if we look at retirement age back in say 1909 on the left hand side, so in 1909 age pension age for males was age 65. Now I did mention right now it's now six, age 67, but about only half of the male population lived to age 65. So the average time spent in retirement was about 11 years as well. So it just shows you that we are living longer and it also just reminds us that we need to go ahead and plan a lot earlier and put this under a microscope to ensure that we've got enough income to accumulate throughout our retirement life. If we go ahead and fast forward 100 or so years forward, now the life expectancy of an average male is 80 for me it was 81 and the average time spent in retirement which is just um, considerably more it's an extra eight years which you know which which requires support of income females are also expected to live a little bit longer until uh, um, around about age 85 so um, a little bit um, a little bit more planning again for uh, for, for females so just some in in interesting statistics there if we look at growing your superannuation, I spoke about making contributions, but the first contribution that goes into your super is your employer contribution. And like I said, legislation has just been passed that um, your employer contributes 10% of your gross income into your superannuation. It, it was 9.5% and it's eventually going to increase by increments up to eventually about 12% over time. But when your employer contributions go into your superannuation, it goes into a portfolio and that portfolio is made up of a variety of investments and also the investments are called asset classes. So these are the asset classes. Really, when you look at investing, um, you can invest in cash, which are really secure. You can see there on the axis there that um, cash doesn't give you a, a large amount of return. It does give you some return, but it has pretty much no risk associated with it. Then you start stepping up the ladder to fixed interest or also known as bonds, a slightly elevated amount of risk for an elevated um, return as well. So those two asset classes, cash and fixed interest, they're classified as defensive investments or asset classes. Then you move into growth asset classes such as property, um, infrastructure, which are things like railroads, tollways, um, water, electricity, um, there's also alternatives you can invest in and then there's shares um, or just investing in companies that um, you are a partial owner. So your super fund invests into a portfolio that has a mix of these asset classes, defensive 
and growth asset classes. So when we look at the portfolios, say with AMPs, Star Super Fund for Southern Cross, when you first joined the fund, you would have been placed into a default investment portfolio. And it's actually reflective on your decade of birth. So someone who's joining the workforce younger um, or joining the fund young, at a younger age will go into a more aggressive um, and higher weighted to growth assets in their portfolio. So you can see at the very bottom of the graph, in light blue, you've got defensive assets, cash and bonds, and then in growth assets, you've got property, um, uh, infrastructure, and also um, shares. You can see that someone who's like 23 years of age, if they entered the, fun, in, uh, entered the workforce and obviously um, joined one of these uh, uh, super funds, you would find that their exposure to growth assets would be about 95% of their portfolio and 5% in defensive assets. You can see as you start transitioning through your working life, these funds, these default funds, they're called life stage funds, they start to de-risk for you. So they are automatically de-risking as you get older. So someone who's in there, say nearly 43 years of age, you can see that the amount of growth assets has reduced slightly, you've probably got about 90% of your money still exposed to growth assets and about 10% still in defensive assets. We start moving down obviously into our 50s, our mid 50s, we've probably got uh, around about probably 70% of your money in growth assets and the other 30% in defensive assets. And then by the time you get to say 65, this portfolio would have just over 50% exposed in growth assets. So that's there to protect you from any volatility because with growth assets, they obviously bring greater return, but obviously that takes a little bit more risk and volatility as well. Remember when you get to age 65 as well, we're living until probably our 80s or 90s. So your investment time frame is still quite substantial. So it's important not, not to de-risk too much too early because then your money may may not outlive yourself. So when we contribute to super, we've got our employer contributions going in. They're also called SG contributions or superannuation guaranteed contributions. They're guaranteed by the government that your employer must pay 10%. So there's employer contributions, but there's also concessional contributions or also known as salary sacrifice contributions. So that's directing some of your pre-tax income into your super, which could, which could boost your retirement savings. So you would pay 15% contributions tax when the money goes into super. And I've got an example for, um, uh, for, for someone on an income uh, of about $70,000 as well. Um, so um, pretty much you, um, the, the money is invested in a, it's a super highly tax effective super environment, superannuation now and also for when you retire. Um, but any earnings within superannuation within your portfolio um, are taxed at a maximum of 15% as well. Um, where if you were to invest outside of superannuation, any investment earnings are taxed at your marginal tax rate. And for some people that might, that could be up and above 15, 20, 25, 30, 40%. So superannuation is definitely a tax effective vehicle. So how do you start salary sacrificing? Well, firstly, calculate, calculate how much um, your employer SG contributions will add up to for the financial year. And then you can obviously put that into, you know, you can put this into the, your calculator and then you can obviously play around with how much, um, what impact salary sacrificing will have on your, your balance. Think about how much you want to contribute from your future salary, from say any bonuses, some leave entitlements, or sometimes people put their tax in there as well, but um, that would be an after tax contribution. Also consider talking to a professional. So you can always give us a call here at Advice First and we can help you um, run through a couple of uh, scenarios. Pretty much salary sacrificing works for someone who's um, earning uh, above in excess of say $56,000. Um, anything below that, your, um, your tax rate is probably under the rate of 15%, which is what salary sacrifice contributions are taxed at. 
But if you're wanting to proceed further, you can always speak to usually your payroll department um, and they can assist you with um, determine or um, setting up a, um, a, a deduction straight from your salary before tax for your salary sacrifice contributions. So here's a quick example, just a normal scenario, someone on a gross salary of say $75,000 Normally their tax paid would be around about $15,262, um, which is a tax rate of about 20.35%. So your take home pay would be just shy of $60,000. So if you move over to the right hand side, you've got a salary sacrifice scenario that I've put together. S same income, so someone who's on $75,000, they decide on the right hand side there to contribute $5,000 as a salary sacrifice contribution into their super. And then on the left hand side, they're left with $70,000 as income. So the tax on $70,000 is around about $13,537. And then also the tax on super, remember when your money goes into super via salary sacrifice, it's taxed at a rate of 15%. So you char you're charged your tax $750 and your super fund just sends that off to the Australian Taxation Office. So the total amount of tax paid is about $14,287. That's a rate of about 19.05%. So you can see the difference there. It's well over 1.3%. That's about 1.3% difference that you've saved in tax by just putting obviously $5,000 into superannuation. One thing that will be a little bit different is you are taking a bit of a hit on your income, but it is a form of discipline and habit. Um, but your take home pay will reduce, no longer 59,738, but 56,463. But you can see the additional amount that you've contributed to your super is $4,250. So if you threw that sort of scenario into a retirement simulator, um, it'll make a world of difference in relation to one, your tax, but also, um, the, um, the the benefit of compounding interest and accumulating for your retirement. But you can see there that your net benefit overall is 60,713 compared to 59,738. So nearly a $1,000 saving, which is obviously a tax saving. You can also contribute to super via after tax contributions. So money that has been paid, um, you've paid tax on somewhere uh, throughout the process of paying tax. It could be money sitting in your bank account. And that's called a non-concessional contribution because when you put the money, this money into super, it's not taxed at a concessional contribution rate. It's non-concessional. That's why it's called non-concessional. So to talk about your caps, it's important to understand what your caps are. So concessional contributions, which is your employer contributions plus any salary sacrifice contributions, Add those two together, they can't exceed $27,500. Last year, the cap was $25,000. So legislation change has just increased up to $27,500. After tax contributions or non-concessional contributions, your cap is $110,000. So that's money that's come in from some form of source. You've paid tax on it. It's sitting in your bank account and then you make a contribution into super you're not taxed again when it goes in, the, the, the total amount you're allowed to um, put in as non-concessional contributions is 110,000. Last year, that cap was 100,000, so it has increased, which is great to see. There are things called carry and bring forward rules. So for your concessional contributions, any non-used cap amount that you don't use, you're able to carry forward to the next year or the next year, or the next year, but it can't exceed five years. So let's say, you know, in a financial year with employer contributions and salary sacrifice contributions, you were able to put in $20,000 worth of contributions altogether. It means you got $7,500 that was unused. You can carry that forward to the next year on top of your new $27,500 cap that you get for next year. For your concessional, uh, non-concessional contributions, if you're under age 67, you are allowed to make a, you're allowed to bring forward a couple of years of contributions. So you're allowed to make a contribution of $330,000 in one hit, but you're not allowed to make any further contributions for the next 
consecutive two years after that as well, because that's really looking at making a contribution of 110,000 over three years. But some people do come into some money, they will allow you to go ahead and make that, um, that lump sum contribution. If you're over age 67, um, unfortunately, the, the cap is still $110,000. If you are selling a home and you're age 65, you can give us a call because there are rules around um, people that are selling their home and downsizing and having the opportunity to put money from the proceeds from the sale of their house into super. So we'll talk about um, the competitiveness of the Southern Cross Staff Super Fund, but before I do, there's a thing called the AMP simplification process that you may have received some communication on over the last, say, 12 months. It was pretty much um, AMP as a business um, and a provider of financial services that's been around for about 175 years. You can imagine the amount of um, uh, businesses and companies that they've gone ahead and acquired over that time and all the different products that have come into their product listing. It was time that they went ahead and simplified their menu of products. So they've gone ahead and rolled pretty much all of their super products into one. And from one October, um, the uh, the simplification process is going to take effect. Now, the Southern Cross Austereo Staff Super Fund is called AMP Signature Super, um, which is what the entire product range is going to be called moving forward. Um, there are some new features and benefits, so there are really just some enhancements to your uh, to your fund. Um, there's been obviously a reduction in some fees, which I'll explain. Um, they've refined the investment menu. I showed you the default investment um, life stage funds that you go into when um, when you first join, um, but you can step outside of those if you like. And within their investment menu, they've brought it from about 170 different options down to about 50, just to go ahead and um, and really utilise those funds that people are exposing them, themselves to and it provides them greater scope and leverage to negotiate cheaper fees for you. Another benefit is um, online non-lapsing binding death nominations. You can now nominate a binding death nomination. So I'll talk about binding death nominations in a few more slides, but you can now nominate online from 1 October and, um, and, and go from there. So with the fees, um, we can see here that the mice uh, up the top, uh, the, the top row there, you've got the My Super 1960s fund. So that would be the default portfolio that if you're born in the 1960s, you would have X amount in defensive assets and X amount in uh, growth assets. And then you've got the My Super 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. So these are the, the My Super life stage funds. That's what the default investment options are, and that's what this pricing is based on. The investment fee. Prior to 1 October, members were paying 0.3%. From 1 October, it's been reduced to 0.26% because of the simplification process. The administration fee, so for the running costs of the super fund, it's 0.29%. Um, member fee, it, is, it was $7.57 per month per member. It's been reduced due to the simplification process to $6.50 per month, but for Southern Cross, uh, Austereo members, um, as your servicing advisors, we've been able to negotiate with AMP on behalf of Southern Cross to have that waived. That's obviously um, uh, the benefit of having us involved to help ensure that um, your fund remains competitive against peers. There's a, fund, uh, a fee called an indirect cost ratio, which is part of the running costs of the, um, of the fund itself as well, and that differs depending on the different age or cost or decade or cohort or portfolio that you're in. So if you look at your total fees, that's what you're paying across the board. They're well below industry averages, um, but the cost of a product for say a $50,000 balance, um, it's $435 for someone in the 1960s fund, uh, but prior to um, 1 October, someone was paying $455, so a $20 saving per year just shows the impact of the simplification process. And then you can see the different cohorts, just what the, um, uh, the, the, the fees accumulate to and what they were prior to 1 October. So getting the most out of your super, we'll also look at just the, um, the additional insurance that you receive as well. So not only do you have contributions coming into your super invested in your portfolio to help accumulate the balance over time, but you also have a small 
insurance policy on the side. It's um, It covers you for death cover, so in the event of death, or in the event that you are totally and permanently disabled. Now, the um, on the left-hand side in the box there, it's got the membership category. So this is relevant for permanent staff and group and senior management. Um, the formula for death and total and permanent disability is 15% times your salary, times by how many years left until age 65. So let's say if there was an employee who was just on round figures, $70,000, times that by 15%, okay, uh, that's $10,500. Then this, this person is, let's say, 40 years of age. So they've got 25 years left until age 65. So 15% times 70,000, that gives you $10,500. Times that by 25 years, that will give you a lump sum death and total and permanent disability benefit of $262,500. And that is paid to your beneficiary or to your legal representative or your estate on the event of death or to yourself um, in the event of being totally and permanently disabled. So that means that you're unable to work in any occupation that you're reasonably suited to ever again. And those premiums for that insurance is paid by the member. And another thing with Southern Cross Austereo, um, we've gone out to the market to look at um, the best insurers out there in the market to obtain the most competitive rates for your insurances as well for both your death, total and permanent disability, and also your salary continuance, which I'll talk about in a second. Now for casual staff, their formula is based off of an age-based table. So you can see there, let's point out, say a 43-year-old, they would receive $32,800 of death and total and permanent, um, permanent disability. Now let's move on to salary continuance. Salary continuance insurance, um, this is available for permanent staff, group and senior management. So for permanent staff, the formula is, well, firstly, salary continuance. If you're sick or injured and unable to perform your duties at work under the prescribed care of a practitioner that says that you can't go to work, after 30 days, if you still can't work, you're able to go ahead and submit a claim. Now, the insurance will pay you 75% of your gross income, your salary, and your benefit is paid for a maximum of two years. All right, so you've got to be off work for 30 days, unable to work in your um, in your occupation, and it will pay you 75% of your salary for two years. And the premiums are funded out of your superannuation by yourself. For group and senior management, um, once again, it pays you 75% of your salary. The benefit period, though, it's paid until age 65, and but the waiting period is 90 days, so you have to be off work for 90 days. Once again, premiums paid by your super fund. There's a thing there called an automatic acceptance limit. It just means that you receive this insurance automatically upon joining the fund within 20 days of joining employment with Southern Cross. You receive your death, your total and permanent disability and your salary continuance straight away, immediately. You don't have to fill out any um, medicals, any applications or go through any underwriting. But for your income protection it'll cover, or your salary continuance, it'll cover you up to a maximum of $14,500. If your income um, exceeds up and above that um, on a monthly level, you can come and talk to us and we can help you with applying for levels up and above that. Same with your death and total and permanent disability cover. The automatic acceptance limit is $1.5 million. So if your formula exceeds that, you will only receive up to $1.5 million. So let's move on to your beneficiaries. So let's look after obviously the people that are important to you in the event of your death. So where would you like your, um, your superannuation benefit and your death benefit to go in the event of your death? So you need to go ahead and nominate a beneficiary. It's really important because you don't want your family to have to um, fight for this. It can maybe take up to 12 months, two years for it to be sorted out, and it can also cause a lot of issues within families. So go ahead and um, take five minutes of your time to go ahead and complete a nomination of beneficiary form that says there who you can nominate. It has to be a financial dependent, someone who's financially dependent on you, um, which is like a spouse, can be a, um, a de facto, including same-sex couples, your children, a financial dependent. Um, if you don't have someone who's financially dependent on you, you can leave it to a legal representative or your estate. So you can nominate that on your form. And that means that you should have a will 
on the side, which would then go ahead and specify where, how and where you would like your assets distributed to. So as of 1 October, you are able to go ahead and nominate online. Uh, a couple of other little tips. Um, the government makes government co-contributions. So it's pretty much if you're earning um, below $41,112, um, and if you contribute $1,000 of your after-tax income into super, so it has to be a non-concessional contribution, the government will give you $500. So that's a 50% return on your money. Now, if you earn between $41,112 up to $56,112, the $500, if you put in $1,000, the $500 will actually be prorated and, um, and bought back depending on what your salary is. Soon as your income is over $56,112, this, um, this benefit isn't available for you. But it only starts by putting in, say, $20 per week to get you to that $1,000 mark, just to help people on those incomes with a little bit of an incentive from the government as well. There's also spouse contributions. So look, if your spouse is earning less than $37,000 and you contribute um, 3,000 of after-tax money into their super, you could be eligible for a tax offset, which you can offset to your tax liability, and the maximum tax offset is $540. So once again, great for um, for, for spouses who are earning under a, a particular level. Um, that phases out um, at 40 if your spouse earns more than $40,000 per year. So if you want to learn more, um, look, any website um, or any provider has their websites, but with AMP, you can download the AMP app and, um, and, and they will go ahead and send you a PIN number. Or you can also log into My AMP through your desktop as well. I've got some details there for you, you to ring AMP if you'd like to go ahead and engage online. Because remember, your super is going to accumulate to one of the largest accounts that you ever have. So it's important that you have full access and transparency to it at all times. There's just obviously some um, illustrations of what their apps look like. Um, and the um, the My AMP app is like a bit of a, a financial hub. Um, you can go ahead and bring in assets that are non AMP, which will actually be shown and um, collated onto your app as well. And then there's heaps of um, uh, tools and information available online as well with, uh, with AMP or your own provider. Um, you can tune into AMP's webinars as well. They they do have them on a regular basis, and it's all information in relative to superannuation. With ourselves at Advice First, look, we are a financial planning firm. So through our social media platforms, we've got Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Our um, our, our our name to log in is um, at the bottom of those logos, and when you actually follow us. Um, you will get just articles of topical information um, based on anything financial. So it could be creating wealth. It could be insurance, protecting your wealth, retirement planning, tax, estate planning, um, borrowing money, um, utilising a lender. So, um, you know, we bring these out on a um, weekly basis through those platforms to keep you um, abreast of any topical information and just to help educate you and your family members. So please jump online and join us. For further information, you've got my wonderful assistant, Kim. She supports me. There, um, if you've got any general details, give her a call rather than having to go through your own provider. We like to filter uh, all of the calls. It's what we're here for. You've got myself, if you're looking for advice, um, particularly um, regardless of what it is, please give me a call. You've got Lisa Forbes as well. She's a partner and our home loan specialist. She is a broker. She's phenomenal. If you're looking at um, reviewing your current circumstances with your lending with your current provider or uh, wanting a, a health check on that or even looking at getting into the market, feel free to um, to utilise Lisa. That's a free service to you as well. And then you've got AMP's details if you need us. Our QR code's there. So if you need anything, we're, uh, we're always available. Thank you for tuning in. You're going to receive an invitation for some one-on-ones and we hope uh, we hope to see you soon and, uh, and and all the best for you and your families. And we hope that, you know, things um, in, uh, in in the, the end of the year and also uh, into next year are obviously uh, less restrictive for us all. Um, from us to you, in good health, goodbye. <laughs>